so the Lucid Air seems to still be on track. However, the Lucid CEO thinks it's cool to attack Tesla fans. Another CEO that is not so friendly is the CEO of Nikola. Nikola sued Tesla over the design of the Tesla Semi a while ago. And we have to say, this is really ridiculous. Then just when we thought the Chinese company Biden is looking good, turns out it's actually looking pretty bad. Of course, because of the virus. Then not only did Rivian postpone the production start of their pickup truck, no, Lord's Tongue is now also joining the We use the crisis as a convenient excuse to postpone the production start of our cars club. In that context, of course, we also must talk about the Cybertruck design changes. Talking of design, Subaru announced its first electric car and guess what? They said they want to make it as futuristic as possible. Then also a bit on Hyperloop. The Polish Hyperloop company HyperPoland just secured half a million euros in a new funding round. And now we also have the first city to host a commercial air taxi airport. And no, it is of course not in the West. A lot to talk about friends, so stay tuned. We talked about the Lucid Air already a few times. And we really like the design of this car. Nicely futuristic and certainly more progressive on the exterior than the Tesla Model S. The specs also sound excellent. With a claimed range of 400 miles or 640 kilometers. However, the CEO of Lucid, Peter Rawlinson, lashed out at Tesla fans in a recent interview, likening them to petrol fanboys. Hmm? Say what again? <coughs> yes! He said, quote, Lucid is being put down by Tesla fans. Those old petrol fanboys are the current Tesla fanboys. Very similar rhetoric. Now, we don't know if this guy is serious, but this is really... I mean, Tesla is constantly being attacked brutally from all sides all the time. Like, all the time. In countless FUD articles, in countless real-life attacks like icing, and attacking Teslas physically, and so on and so forth. So comparing Tesla fans to petrol fans is therefore absolutely, let's say, unintelligent. It's sad because we really like the Lucid Air. And the Lucid factory in Casa Grande, Arizona is still progressing nicely despite the crisis, which is also very good. So please, Rawlinson, stop this behavior, okay? Because this could really hurt sales of the Lucid Air. And even though this company is backed by Saudi Arabia, which we don't find so nice, you know, you know, oppressive theocracy and so on, we still would like to see the Lucid Air succeed because we need more successful electric cars. So stop, Rawlinson, okay? Just stop. But Rawlinson is not alone with such remarks and actions. The CEO of Nikola Motors keeps attacking Tesla, and they even sued Tesla over the supposed patent infringement regarding the design of the Tesla semi-truck quite a while ago. Which is really ironic considering the name of Nikola Motors. Just saying, you know. Not really innovative to call your company Nikola when there's already Tesla. What would Nikola Tesla had said to this? He would certainly have been fine with Tesla. You know, Tesla using his invention, the AC induction motor, but not so fine with Nikola because hydrogen. But then again, Tesla tried to build a giant tower at Wardenclyffe to remotely power cars, airplanes, and ships over the air. An amazing genius he was. It's certainly worth reading up on him because it's just mind blowing how many patents he had and how much of our current technology we owe to him. Okay, in the end, he fell in love with a pigeon, but hey, give this man a break. Nobody's perfect. Anyway, so Nikola claims the Tesla Semi stole the design from Nikola's truck and thus infringed Nikola patents. This is a case of classic patent trolling, ladies and gentlemen. I myself worked as a patent examiner for a few years and let me tell you that Nikola has no chance of winning this case. Let's look at some truck designs from way before Nikola was even created. Aha! Uh -huh. Very interesting, huh? What? 
Yes, so we see that aerodynamic truck design existed many, many years before the company Nikola was even founded in the year 2012. Nikola Motors CEO Trevor Milton can shake hands with the Lucid guy. It's sad to see good companies get a bad reputation because their CEOs seem to have some kind of inferiority complex and cannot handle the fact that Elon Musk and Tesla is so far ahead of them, therefore they feel the constant need to attack Tesla. Childish people in the position of CEO. What could possibly go wrong? Talking of things going wrong. Last time we were happy to say that Biden seems to be right on track to start the mass production of the Biden MBIT. And only one day later, Biden furloughs half of its employees at their headquarters in California. WTF, Biden. Seriously, only two weeks ago, they said that they were right on track to release their Biden MBIT by the end of 2020 in China and by 2021 also in the US and in Europe. Now suddenly, they not only furlough half of their US employees, they also made a new statement on electric. Our production timeline will no doubt be impacted. We are evaluating that impact. Seriously, how can they do this? This makes me so angry, angry. That was close. We want to see the Biden M Byte come to market because even though Biden is backed by the, let's say, uh, also not most tolerant government on this planet, we're still friends, China, right? 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 We love that gigantic, insanely ultra, super duper wide 48 inch screen. So please cut the crap, Biden. We want to see the M Byte finally released. But fortunately, that was all the delays. No more delays. Unfortunately, we received word that Lord Sun has postponed to 2021. <laughs> 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 No. Sorry for that outburst, but we are getting really annoyed with all the delays. We have the impression that many companies are now using the virus crisis as a convenient excuse to delay the release of their products, where in fact it would probably have been delayed anyways. Now it's cool. We already mentioned that Rivian will delay the release of their pickup truck to early 2021. Now Lordstown Motors is doing the same. They also pushed back their pickup truck to early 2021. Sure, the current economic climate is not really good, but please stop using the virus as a convenient excuse to delay stuff. If they just keep delaying and delaying, Cybertruck will eat all these other pickup trucks for breakfast. The only small chance they had was to beat the Cybertruck to market, but as it looks now, probably the Cybertruck will come to market even faster than them, as we know Elon. Probably by late 2021, the Cybertruck Gigafactory will be up and running and pump out Cybertrucks, therefore completely destroying the pickup truck competition. And by the way, Cybertruck pre-orders just keep on rising. They are now already at 650,000. Now interestingly, the Cybertruck will get a small design change. It will be 3% smaller, have a lower window line and also the inclination will be a bit reduced making it more horizontal in appearance, which will look like this here. The change is minuscule but noticeable nonetheless and we have to say it looks even cooler and now will also be able to fit inside a standard garage. Regarding futuristic and aggressive design, we prophesied not long after the Cybertruck release that the insane success of the Cybertruck will inspire, nay, force the old companies to also release futuristically and aggressively designed cars. One of the things we hate the most about the legacy car makers, and we often rant it about, and we will continue to rant about it, is that they have been showing us these outrageously cool and futuristic cars since decades. And then the cars you can actually buy look boring as hell compared to that. 
Tesla Cybertruck will force them to change this stupid strategy. Because what a surprise! Many people actually like futuristic designs. Who would have thought? And the first one to acknowledge that is Subaru, a not so well known Japanese car maker. They unveiled their Evaldi's concept car last year. And of course, we expected the production version to be much more boring compared to that. But the interesting thing is that Subaru said that the production version will look at least as, if not even more radical and futuristic than the concept car. Aha, mm -hmm. what a change of strategy suddenly, hmm? We wonder where that comes from. You know, back in 2012, Tesla forced all car makers to start using digital displays in their cars with the Model S. And now Tesla is forcing the car makers to release futuristic cars with Cybertruck. Thank you, Tesla, thank you. For forcing the old car makers not only to go electric and build electric cars, but also to give us digital instrument clusters and finally also radical and futuristic designs. Regarding Hyperloop, we once briefly mentioned the Polish startup company HyperPoland, right? Well, they secured 500,000 euros in a new funding round just last week. And we like the concept of HyperPoland because they suggest building Hyperloop in steps using existing rail lines. So first they want to start by building maglev trains on existing rail lines, which would then float above the rail line, so to speak, and would enable speeds of 300 to 400 km per hour. Then in a second step, they want to build low pressure air tubes around certain rail lines, allowing the maglev inside the tubes to travel with speeds of already up to 900 km per hour. And only then, in the last step, they want to build new Hyperloop systems from the ground up. We have to say this is an excellent approach because it would allow Hyperloops to gradually evolve using existing infrastructure. Gotta love the Polish people, respect! And then we have the first city, which will host an air taxi port. Of course, as we predicted, it's in China, namely in Hezhou, in the Guangxi region. It's a really small city, almost a village for Chinese standards with only a few million inhabitants. Anyways, the Chinese air taxi Yihang, which we mentioned quite a few times already, has signed a deal with Hezhou to commercialize autonomous aerial vehicle services for the use by tourists. The air taxi part is scheduled to be completed by the end of 2020, when some 20 Yihang 216 two-seat passenger grade autonomous aerial vehicles will take tourists for sightseeing trips, according to a company statement. Now we hope that the West will see this as a strong motivation to enter the air taxi game. So what do you think? Who won the stupidity contest this time? Lucid or Nikola? And do you agree with us that many companies are now using the health crisis to delay the release of their products? So you just watched the JS Disruption Report, which we do on every Wednesday, the show where we give you our honest opinions and thoughts about the most recent disruptive technologies such as electric cars, Hyperloop, Boring Company and things like this. So thanks for watching and I would say, on to the future! Ah! Ah!